Hello everyone, Mark Sergeant again, and uh, we will model today a T-Rex. And uh, just as a quick uh, reference, I've collected a couple images. Uh, mostly important is the side view. Probably this one gives the most information. We will start with the center of the body, so we will create this block from a cube, and then extend uh, further to create the other parts. And there is a description about the animal itself. Uh, I was looking for about uh, sizes, so it's 12 meters overall length, and probably um, the, the body is at the height of 4 meters. So this means this from the ground, this is about 4 meters. So I guess this volume should be about 3 meters uh, or 2 overall. It's not a big issue if uh, I'm not 100% correct, but uh, some close settings are okay. So from the customized menu, unit setup, uh, display and scale is set to metric centimeters. System unit setup is also set to uh, centimeters. Uh, please don't forget to adjust the system unit setup, otherwise you may end up creating uh, things in inches. Uh, and uh, it's not a problem, but it's a problem if the display and scale is different and it's used the metric and not a US standard imperial settings. Okay, uh, we have the ribbon open. If you don't see the ribbon, here's the button show ribbon. Uh, we have the scene explorer open on the left side. This is it. And um, um, the view cube is also there. Uh, and uh, maybe one side note about the settings. Uh, I will turn off this, the special settings kind of a highlight, a highlight outline, and when uh, the model is selected, it will glow. So I really don't like this. So let me go customize preferences and uh, choose viewports. And here's this selection preview highlights will be turned off. So by default, if you select anything in 3ds Max, it will show it in white. And when you are modeling a single element for an hour, it really makes no sense to see this um, highlight uh, over and over your uh, content. So if you want, you can turn this off as well. But don't forget, when you have something selected, it will be white. So please avoid to add a white color to a mesh because that's, that's uh, uh, dedicated to selection color in previous weeks by default. Uh, okay, so yes, we don't need a teapot. What we do need is a box created from the left viewport. Uh, that's the main uh, that's the main volume. So let me show this. So here we are. This is the main volume. So we are creating this from the left side. So box is created. I'm dragging it out. I don't see the values. I'm just guessing now. I'm just creating this. And then I will go to uh, the modify panel. In your case, if you have more room in the create panel you may see the parameters here at the bottom but uh, other than that if you have, have created something you can just go to the modify panel and adjust it accordingly so the length will be 150 centimeters this will be about 300 centimeters and uh, the height will be about uh, one meter and uh, let me tell you that if you type in one meter it will be converted into 100 centimeters so if you don't like to type in too many things you can actually use the unit and 3d specs will convert your stuff okay function key 4 is you turn on to show edges so we are using edged faces because that will be a great help and now this one is on the ground so let me lift this up a little bit uh, somewhere closer to the uh, to the four uh, meters range Okay, so this is the floor and this will be the volume for the body. And now I can add some segments, uh, segments here in this direction and maybe a couple of segments here in this direction. I think this will be okay for a start. So let me, uh, maybe the width is a bit too much. So let me dial this down to 80 centimeters. Then I can convert it right click so maximize the viewport right click and convert it into edit table poly and uh, as it is i need to have a mirror so if i'm checking in the front view this is where we are so in the front view i'm working on the right side of the model here it tells front if i'm going to the left side this is the left side 
So uh, polygons are selected, and I'm selecting all the polygons in this side and holding down Alt key and remove from the selection and don't forget to rotate your model around to check what you have selected. These are the polygons inside the model and we don't need them. So that's it. And then once we have it done, we can go and add the symmetry modifier on top of it. And it's now mirroring to front and back. But what we do need actually is the Z-axis in this case because it was created in the lab report. So if you don't, uh, if you make it differently, uh, then you have uh, may, you may have a chance that you have to use a different axis or even flip. Okay, but other than that, uh, this is the model. So let me go to the vertices and don't forget uh, when you are on the lowest level, uh, this chemistry tube is could be turned on and off. Right now, because it is turned off, nothing is visible. But if I'm turning this on, everything that is on top of the hierarchy will be there okay so i'm in vertex mode you can switch between uh, modes here and here two number one is vertices number two is edge number three is border and polygon etc so i'm just dragging this move it closer a little bit and what we do need we need to we need to place the thighs and as you see uh, all of the images are turned to pointing to the right direction so this is what, uh, what i like to do i don't like when uh, images are mixing uh, directions so usually it's much easier on the logic uh, so we need to create the volume of this we need to create the volume of the belly so for that I will select these points and make sure that the right points are selected drag them here uh, drag this too as well move it here and this will be the thigh area this will be the belly area so I'm just uh, uh, pulling this down a little bit because that's the body probably pull this up slightly and this one a little bit lower because there's a hump here so I'll place it somewhere here and there's another hump here so this end will be a little bit lower so I'm just tracing uh, the model yep also here there's a shorter volume probably a little bit higher or at the end I have to pull this up and that's it for now and from the front i'm going to the front select all the points but going back again perspective b and checking if my points are right and selected the right amount same thing here i guess i have selected the right points but i can't be sure so this is what i do now um, you can check the gizmo so if you know that the points are already in one bunch so at least in one plane uh, it, it will be a sign of a, a selection of an error if this is a slightly the gizmo is a little bit offset so when you see uh, the selection is a bit offset especially if you have selected in the row you can see now it's on the plane but if I select only one point it will be off the plane so this is uh, the sign I'm looking for when I'm rotating so when I rotate I will be able to see that the gizmo is off okay now let me make my selection and then pulling in and checking okay so don't forget to check what you did before you move on and it's not working in one view right so never do that let me pull this on why because it makes the model rounded okay so even if even if i don't have any smoothing around uh, slight roundness can help a lot at the end okay now it's time to create the thigh so let me pull these four points back a bit and uh, go in here. Number four is pressed because I want to go with the polygon. And probably this polygon should be pointed outside a little bit to make it more, uh, more organic. Shift E is the hotkey for extrusion or you can use this uh, edit polygons extrude or we can uh, also use it here extrude and uh, right now it's shift E extruding out I don't want to be so big on the extrusion because even a slight extrusion is enough so you just have to grab and pull the, uh, the polygons let me shrink this down a bit and uh, move it accordingly if you made an error on the selection don't forget that if you press undo uh, you can go back and uh, 
in time and on your selection changes as well and not just uh, not just uh, extrusions or anything like that okay but before again I was working on the edge level shift E to extrude left viewport and pull this up a bit and uh, as a guess it's this, this is an angle here even if even if the figure is uh, absolutely symmetrical and static uh, we need to have an angle because otherwise we can't hold this amount of mass uh, in the in scene so what I will do is I will select this uh, on point level and rotate these guys and move it here rotate this slightly and probably this one should be rotated as well and pull this up and now the legs the leg is pulled up a bit and also the belly here all right so just just to just to start shaping the figure okay let me move this down and again rotating around and see what's going on and as i see there's a there's a canting outwards i don't want to do this this is much more promising okay now uh before we are moving on we will create a couple of things a couple of steps more and i'm also curious about the front so uh at this area will be probably where uh, the knees are so maybe this one should be a little bit smaller this back should be also a little bit smaller and uh, this point will be pulled in and this point as well okay and uh, probably I will need to add another edge loop that's running through but uh, uh, let me skip that at first now because there's a belly you also need to select these two points and pull this out all right so this will give some volume now let me check what's going on with the when the tumor was on so here it is now as you see the belly is started shaping here's this uh, split all uh, right now the back of the figures uh, here at the top is a little bit flat so we definitely need a a contour that's running through here this one is not there yet okay so don't forget that this is the original mesh and this is a subdivided mesh that you see in white and uh, we definitely need an edge around here and play with the with the arc uh, to to shape it but right now I don't want to uh, add more to the geometry so before doing that let me shift E extrude and start the tail area so let me scale it down move it up a bit and check the reference okay there's a, there's a scale step go in perspective and because scale was used I have to double check that if the scale shrinks down my model until it breaks up so let me pull this back go to top view and uh, just by eyeballing I'm dragging this back and um, at the end right now I'm not really interested but I can do that I delete this these polygons but at the end uh, that will be a little bit longer so let me go back polygon selections like these and, uh, and maybe I can uh, flatten them now uh, we can use a line I don't know which one X is X is okay um, so it was aligned to X it's flattened to X another technique that I like to use and especially in early days so I was pressing R to go into scale mode and along the Y axis in this case I'm just flattening this down so uh, you don't even have to keep this open uh, but um, for the beginning stages it might be useful and some features are available there nicely okay now here's another trick that uh, you can do is uh, pulling this out until you reach uh, the overall length and then uh, just scale this down and we will add more cross sections so let me let me have a look so there's this big volume and then it's shrinking now but the overall is about the length of the body I think this one is a little bit short this one's this T-Rex is a little bit flat fat compared to this one and uh, probably this should be longer scale it even more and okay I'm happy with that now uh, maybe moving up and adding some uh, an arc at the end uh, we will see 
So let me go back to check the top view because I'm pretty sure every time where is this kind of shrinking is involved, this type of shrinking, uh, it makes the polygon off center. So you have to grab and drag here. Okay, that's right. Now, don't forget, because of this extrusion, we have a big bunch of polygon. And we will actually insert that, edit, okay, and edit Swift Loops. Okay, so I will use Swift Loops. And, uh, but the hint, the problem is when you're using Swift Loops, when you have polygons already there, Swift Loops will also create more and more polygons. And, and we don't want to create tiny, tiny, small polygons at the end. So before starting using Swift Loops, let me go in perspective, I'm sorry, uh, polygon modeling, uh, polygon level, delete, and now I'll go in and swift loop. Yep, and now I've divided it just by eyeballing and I can go in, left viewport, F4 to make sure that I see the actual points. And edges number one pressed to go to vertex level and uh, I can just play with the arc a little bit adding some dynamism maybe here pull this up this one even more okay so just uh, it's just kind of a natural way to to do it and you don't have to delete any of the polygons inside uh, let me check double check this here because if you want to make it pointy, you can drag the polygon inside and pull this out a little bit. And at the end, this is how it looks. So there is, there is this shape. Okay, now let's move on uh, to the front area. So yeah, definitely we need to add uh, legs. Probably the belly between the legs should be a little bit lowered. Let me pull this down up here and uh, to add the 3d look of the thighs and everything we will uh, just go in and create on edge level oh no vertex level probably vertex level is a little bit better for me swift loop and adding that's not visible now it's visible so I've added this complete loop and I will drag this up a little bit and show show and result will show that uh, what's my goal my goal is to give the add the hump over there also these two should be elevated a little bit more yep and uh, the 3d look so probably this one may be rescaled this one could be pulled out a bit okay so I'm rotating around looking from all directions now it's, it's, it's a little bit rounded the, the more i pull the more rounded it will be so i will reach a point where it's just pointless it's not important anymore but uh, that, that's it and of course we want to go to create a somewhat round cross section as possible so if you create a kind of a, uh, a hexagon shape usually a hexagon when it is smoothed out and turbo smoothed out uh, usually it creates a fairly nice surface and as you see it's it's still quad so it's still two uh, quads so let me select these turn off shift E for extrusion go to L left slightly rotate switch to E rotation W to move check my reference alt tab okay this is fairly wide so let me pull this gap perspective again polygons shift e and now left and this will be a little bit wider so I'll scale this down up and pull it back in so there's a there's a back probably it's too long compared to the reference image so let me pull this up make it make the thighs a little bit shorter and number four perspective shift e to extrude and now uh, let me shrink it back uh, to add okay how does it look it's longer so that point is okay shifting again left going w let me check it in the front uh, these are perfectly parallel so when i'm starting in it's perfectly parallel i don't think it's real so probably there is an angle here 
So I will I will make that angle later on. In just a sec, probably the length is okay. And uh, this is the time where the the body turns. So here and uh, perspective and uh, sh a smaller extrusion to add the joint. Okay, so. This is what I do where you have more information. Usually the, the tur turning point is a little bit sharper. So that's it. Uh, I can even add some kneecaps, some shift knee and scaling this down. So we have kneecaps now. Okay, so you can you can do some tricks like this. Uh, right now these are just boring you parallel. So we can add on, break these up a little bit uh, more realistic. Uh, but uh, the goal here is right now is to we're going to select on the left viewport. Okay, so slide rotation and shifting again, moving this up, left viewport, W, move, and okay, we are, we are down there. And now, now we should create the, the fingers. So we should separate them. So this vertex may be a little bit higher perspective. Okay. Uh, probably these vertices should be also a little bit higher and uh, this two needs to be pulled in because uh, my goal here is to start uh, the fingers and because there are three fingers uh, let me extrude a tight step again okay this will be the kind of a pole so I will start to extrude the fingers from here so but uh, but not with a uh, with a standard extrusion, uh, so it's not Shift E. It is extrusion with settings. So extrude, right click, extrude, extrude with settings, and setting is um, it's not look normal because we don't want to keep them as one group. This is a single group, one direction. Uh, everything is grouped up. This is uh, a multi direction, so local direction each of the extrusion, but the polygons are still welded together. And the third one is by polygon. Now this is what we're looking for by polygon, and uh, this is just a little bit too much. So let me pull this back again. This one too, and pull. Okay. Now it's uh, probably the, the cross section of these is a little bit off, so it's it's much more fat. So what I have to do is to lift this up. Okay. Nice. Squash extrusion, and I want to keep them uh, closer, a little bit closer. Okay, that's it. And probably one more step ahead. Probably one more step ahead. Yeah, why not? Shift E. Yeah, that's it. And probably just uh, scale this down a bit switching to R and because these polygons are individual we don't have to worry about this but don't forget when you're scaling this down so let me go undo when you're scaling this down control Y is redo and freeze this place this is what happens so these are scaled down in place so I'm dragging selecting and pulling them down also going to vertex mode select everything pulling them down and to make it flatten we are selecting all just the points at below the bottom of the feet, the sole, and I'm pressing R. And uh, this is the same thing as with the line, but but it's much faster if you just switch it to scale mode and just flatten this down. And that's it. You can pull the mouse as you see, the book can pull, pull, pull. Uh, the cursor will be coming back on, on the top. So it's like ironing the things. And if you want to make that sure that it's set to, uh, to the ground, you can even press right click on the value. So now everything is is to, totally down on, on the position. If you want to create a clause, um, what you can do is going in and uh, using inset, inset with a bit of settings. So inset, it's, uh, if it's too much, that can cause a problem. Now that is the inset. Shrink this down. And here we go. This is, this is another trick. So let me show this. So shift E, extruding out. And let me explain what we will do. So, true smooth. This is it. Now you can keep it as it is, but as you see, uh, it will it will try to blend the things uh, together, and it's not bad. But um, but it's uh, it's much better if you can keep it sharp. 
Um, you don't have to follow this method, but uh, it can add a nice touch. So how to keep it sharp? You can actually select these edges going Alt L uh, or press loop or selecting the one edge and or double click on an edge. Yeah, double click and select everything. Uh, I'm a kind of old school, so I'm using Alt L and uh, that selects everything and you can choose um, chamfer and this is what it does but let me show this it, it creates a, a fair amount of polygons uh, for no reason and actually it, it may it doesn't make it really sharper so what you can do is let me undo this and uh, the trick i like to use is select this polygons these models selecting these these have to go in here and choose detach and it will ask what uh, type of detach you want I don't want to create a separate model I want to keep it as an element so I'm detaching as an element and, uh, and now these are unveiled so when I'm adding uh, the tuba smooths this is what happens so uh, these are not valid but uh, but these are just so tight that it looks like uh, they're touching and closed. So this is one thing what you can do. And uh, you can spare a lot of a uh, lot of uh, polygons if you wish. And if you're worried about um, uh, the overlapping, so you want to actually create an overlap, this is what you can do. So you can select this. Now it reveals that you have a hole. And uh, so you can actually just uh, select this border shrink it down and select this element element is level five so move in select pull it in and you can even scale this up a little bit and then scale down the polygon level just just the end so this is what you can do if you wish now let me do this on the others as well so elements pulling in element pull this element number three add uh, poly uh, borders uh, we can scale them down if these are not valid and not touching when you are using scale on multiple uh, borders uh, everything will be scaled simultaneously so number five to go to element level and I'm just uh, pulling this in and, and basically that's it pull this in and that's it and go to number four polygon level polygon level or scaling down and yes we have to direct this uh, to, to a little lower so let me check how believable it is okay it's it's fairly believable so it's not not 100 percent perfect but it's fairly believable and if you want to add some nice touches you can just select this model look around and scaling things okay because it was just way too wide compared to the to the actual purpose of the uh, joint and maybe uh, now here comes a little trick so uh, it's much easier to model if it's a little bit flat front and left it's a little bit boring but once you have the lag you can actually select all the vertices go to rotation mode and slightly rotate it and turn it turn it and, and look hey hey it's much more nice it's much more uh, believable and select a point and if you want to adjust a couple things uh, can do that uh, wrap these probably this one's a little bit close okay but let me focus on the, on the front scale this up because it's just on the one direction yeah and this ups up and down direction yep all right now uh, let me look at the, the hands so here's the main body I think it's believable and uh, here will be the front hand okay probably i should pull this back a bit and add another segment so this is what we want to do i'm just uh, pulling selecting this pulling it back go to perspective go to polygon mode number four and shift e extrude it slightly go to left move it up and scale this down only on the y-axis oh yeah i forgot to uh, adjust my extrusion so let me quickly undo this right click extrude and turning off this mode so keep it at group so that way these are not separated so I can move them and scale them unnecessarily perspective 
probably on edge level, move and select this edge and pull this back in. Maybe this point should be pulled back in as well. And now here's the area I want to start the arm. Okay, so Shift E uh, and scale this down, and then Shift E again. This is kind of a shorter joint. Then pulling in W, move in, and I guess we have about two plus. So this is a three. Uh, I can't can't tell two. Okay, so there is two. So maybe I should rotate this on local mode. So when uh, we are using this, it's all to right click and local mode, or you can switch it from here. So sometimes, especially if you have single polygons, you want to switch it. So this is default view, but it's hard to rotate around this, this polygon when you have um, the view mode on. So instead of that, I will switch to alt right click and uh, local. And that way I can rotate the polygon a little bit easier. And this is what I wanted to do. So Shift E again and extrude. And there's a, there's, there's a slight help. There's an elbow here. And uh, let me rotate. And Shift E. And rotate again and move. All right, so these will be okay. Scale this down, move it in. Pull them back. Probably these should be also pulled back. So let me go four and shift. So the loop of polygons is selected. Because I'm lazy, I don't want to select all the points. So the reason I'm not selecting the points, I don't want to select all the points all around. Because it's that's it's really easy to see that I have to move all these around. So then polygon holding on shift key and clicking on will give me a polygon loop, a stripe, so I can move them as one. And uh, now it's just let me switch back to view mode and tilt it. So and don't forget um, pressing time to time um, moving around to check what's going on. Okay, here we are. Maybe even, maybe even smaller. That's it. And a four. And scale it down. And shift E. That's it. Okay. Now and to make uh, to make it happen and create a uh, glow, what I will do is shrink it down and extrude from here actually this form is a little bit longer so before shrinking now scaling it shift e and extrude more and extrude again slightly then switch to scale z scale to local mode no scale it will be verb along the x-axis now it's a little bit skewed so what i have to do is just go to edge level switch to move and make some manual adjustments i do all manual adjustments but instead of a quick solution i have to do it uh, pushing pulling um, almost on vertex level so these are the two polygons i'm looking for this on the side let me extrude them and pull them a little bit further Rotate them. Okay, well, if I switch to local rotation, still that. Okay, view. Then I have to do it by, uh, one by one. But that's it. Okay, rotate. Okay, now a slight tilt, rotating around, checking in, okay, pulling in, and maybe, maybe another extrusion, scale this down and move it down, yeah, 
And if, if you wish, you can actually select these and rotate. So if you have some kind of a specific goal, you can make adjustments. All right. Okay. So let me see how it works. Set uh, four. Okay. I think it's even even longer than necessary. So to make it a little bit more freakish, we can pull this back. But actually, let me let me create first the head because uh, if the head is, uh, we have to check that size as well. But actually, we can select these, all these, and, and rotate these things around and move them. All right. So I was a little bit drastic, but why not? Okay, polygon number four. F4 to see the actual polygon levels and start shaping the neck. So shift E, extrusion, again left viewport, scale R, pulling this down, move it a little bit up. Alright, let me check reference. There's a there's a, a tighter area. So there's a kind of a chest piece here. So maybe these polygons should be a little bit should be pulled a little bit lower. So to form a chest, add more volume to this uh, area. Uh, we can actually bring this down. All right, so there's this chest piece. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe maybe this one is not enough. So uh, there's not much room. So you can see how big these polygons are. These polygons are much smaller compared to that. So I'll select this edge and turn off uh, the showing result and double click on the edge and select everything in the loop. Right click and go to chamfer, and definitely we need more chamfer. And this will be a a um, tri chamfer. So because only need uh, two edges, you can see now the the polygon size a little bit more predictable, uh, much more uh, uniform. Uh, that's good for sculpting and for many other reasons. Okay. So here we go, number four, polygon levels. And uh, maybe it's will shrink too much. So let me pull this, shift A again, pulling this out, left viewport. And uh, actually, I don't have the reference in front of me, I'm just going in, but I guess we, we can uh, quickly start shaping the head. So the head, the back here there is a volume, so we definitely need to scale this up, and then uh, the skull actually the jaws are starting. So, and the eyes are on already above the jaw. Okay, so the, the opening is way behind the eyes. Okay, and this edge should be a little bit lower. So the full. points and soft selection turning on soft selection and fall off if it's bigger soft selection is a great help if you want to uh, reduce the stress on the, on the modeling part and just changing proportions easily you're selecting a single point or a bunch of points or edges whatever and when soft selection is turned on and the fall off is set uh, in an appropriate number I can actually pull these you can even scale up these things and scale like adding more volume in this direction probably uh, we can move the tail as well uh, we can actually scale this up or scale this area all right okay so now it's there's just a little bit of a jagginess here so i have to scale this up manually but but it's much better than uh, previous one so that's soft selection uh, maybe we will use it on the back of the figure or probably in the overall because if it's too long it will be harder i think it's believable i'm looking for i'm looking for the proportions and the, and the weight of the figure that i do so references are great but uh, at the end of the day people will not compare your stuff to the to the reference that you used. So if your stuff is believable, you, they, it looks like it is really standing, then that's it.
Okay, so shifting again. And now it's time to create gems and everything. So let me scale this down and extrude uh, only these. So extrude. And let me take a look. Okay, we definitely need to create a step. So here will be a step. Down and here as well. So that's that's that will be something. Move it off. Okay, points. Yeah, and number four and shift E. Okay, and what is the nose? Yeah. So we need to pull this back on. This is how it looks. All right, yeah, it's much more like a crocodile. So we have to pull back on the nose area. Also this. We definitely have to have kind of an edge around here to make it a little bit more believable. Probably the length and the volume around the nose. So I need to add a swift loop here and uh, because I'm really interested to add some volume and uh, pull this a little bit further to, to add a slant. That's it, okay. Probably the overall, the, the mouth is a little bit too high, so let me turn this off. Again, it's a low poly thing, so don't, uh, don't expect to be very, very detailed. This is, this is a very good foundational model for a basic uh, uh, move test or, or proportion test or lighting or, or something for uh, a further sculpt or you know the background models so there's plenty of uses of, uh, of having uh, base meshes and uh, other things all right now let me see and uh, that's that's Perfect, but we need to have this angle for the jab. So pull this out. That's this a little bit of a close. Yeah, yeah. Pull this down. Pull this. Okay. So I don't want to keep it absolutely open, but I want to, I want to give some room. All right. So it's not a gecko head, so we definitely have to lift this up. So plenty of polygons. Where should be the eye? The eye should be somewhere, sort of around here. Yeah, somewhere around here. Okay. So I will select number four polygon levels. Maybe I can scale it um, the width, and get inset and use the inset. And don't forget, we have we have agions. Geopoly. Geopoly can create a full bias square and then uh, shrink it even more and shift E to extrude and um, you can create eyeball uh, separately or you can actually go and keep uh, the polygons holding on shift key and drag and it will create a polygon and that polygon will be a clone to element so it will be part of your model but it's uh, it's not valid to the base match and then you can use shift E and uh, scale it down and actually, if you want to make it more rounded, uh, this is how it looks now. So that's is that. So it's a separated uh, model, and uh, I will not create any fancy here. Just just make this make this as an eye. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Hold on. All right, so time to add some uh, flatness in the mouth. So I go polygon, turning off showing result. And so I think all the polygons here inside. So I'm rotating around, checking in. Everything is selected, right click and inset. 
this will double the edge around and of course it will create an edge inside uh, maybe the 10 centimeters is too much and yes we need to delete these inside polygons um, yeah the easiest way to delete them is to go to front view and uh, oh, the face is a little bit off so polygons like all the polygons here remove from selection go to perspective and hit delete once we have uh, polygons removed uh, we also have to check the center so these edges should be selected so all these rotate rotate around see if the selection is okay still have to do select these now why because these are off center so these are not really sure that the Line. and probably the width is an issue so let me go to the top viewport and can you see uh, I had an issue somewhere here so this is why it's way too wide let me pull this back and now see what we have okay so the mouth is a little bit better it's much more sharp we have the eyes uh, probably the uh, the overall uh, volume of the head is a little bit uh, less, so I have to make some changes. And left to vertex. Maybe add some more. More here. This point, but don't forget this is these are not single points anymore, so you have to select the point next. And if you want to add some cavity and you have to plan later on to add uh, tiny parts, you can do that. And there was a valving issue, so let me pull this back actually uh, to make it absolutely flat. You can go and select all the points checking if the selection is correct or not now i have to make some adjustments so in okay and i will use the uh, align so freeform align along x axis no not really so align y axis y axis let me check it perspective it's still not good so in this case it will be z axis and now everything is aligned on a single plane and right click and along the axe and everything will be absolutely in the line of symmetry so that is it uh, so thank you goodbye